I started a new fence down the street from where the Packers fence was, um, and it's strictly it's a paint by numbers community fence. Where last year uh, about 200 people came out and finished it in under two hours, but it was a lot simpler design because it was my first year doing it. I didn't know what the turnout was going to be. I had some PR before, some news outlets kind of promoting people to come out there. Um, but now this year it took about 10 hours to complete, and it was about 500 people that showed up. Wow. Um, which was great for the turnout, but sucked for the setup. Yeah. That's, that's, it's basically I'm creating a coloring book on a 70-foot by 6-foot fence. Welcome back, friends. Today I had a short drive from a hotel over in Appleton to Green Bay, Wisconsin. This is only the second time I've actually recorded out in Green Bay. With another person attached to the Packers. Not a player this time, but an artist. Welcome to the show, Zane Stotts. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Dude, I would have guessed it was Stats. It's Stotts. Yeah. I know. Uh, German. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yes, yes. Dude, so your Instagram says you're an official Packers artist. Is that actually a thing? Um, No, but I claim to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, I'm not the official Packers artist. Uh, the Green Bay Press Gazette has written a few articles calling me the unofficial Packers artist. Nice. Um, but no, so I just uh, self-call myself that. Dude, I mean, I put number one podcast in Wisconsin on my page. And there was like a long time where I would tell people that. Yeah. But I'd say as far as i know you know but there's got to be somebody bigger <laughs> sure and five years in like i don't know that there is with what i do anyways and i was listening to this other podcast so there's these two skateboarding podcasts there's one the biggest one's the nine club yeah second biggest one is called the bunt okay weird name for it but they're both the really bunt, good yeah the bunt is a little less censored awesome right yes well the beginning like the nine club is by far the bigger one okay like, by a, a wide margin sure um but the bunt in their intro says the number one podcast in skateboarding and they've been going for like eight years or something, yeah. a long time. Yeah. So the Nine Club invited the hosts of the Bunt finally as guests on their show. And in it, they asked them, they're like, so what's up with the number one podcast in skateboarding? Yeah. And the host of the Bunt just said, like, why wouldn't we call ourselves that? Yeah. And just the attitude about it was like, yeah, yeah. dude. Like, I mean, think about an NFL team. Yeah. Like, Rock what it. team is going to say they're not the best? Oh, yeah. Like, you're always going to say you're the best. Always. Yeah. But, but uh, like, legitimately, I do think... My, this show is the biggest for what it is in Wisconsin. If it's yeah. not, it's close. But that has helped with getting a hold of people. Whether it's like fully real or not, people look that uh, look at that and go, oh, okay, cool. Oh, yeah. You know, and if that's what helps get you stuff, then, you know, why not? Why Run not? with it. Yeah, and I've done enough Packers artists, murals, cleats, and other stuff that I feel that I should be called that. And there's no one else really in the area that's doing that kind of quantity of work, at least. So. Dude, yeah, you've done a lot. So the first, was the fence the first really big thing you did for the Packers? Yes, that was the first really big thing I did. And that was back in 2014. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, that was 10 years ago. Um, and that was by the, the homeowner yeah. that lives across the street. So um, I guess for one, how did you get to come to Green Bay? Cause you're not from here. You're from Sturgeon Bay, right? Correct. Yes. So when did, when and how did you get to Green Bay? Yeah. So, um, yeah, born and raised Sturgeon Bay high school there, went to college at St. Norbert and De Pere. Okay. Um, went there for business and marketing. Uh, no, sorry, business, marketing, and art. Um, the business marketing was kind of one group together. Yeah. Um, but yeah, ever since then, I just kind of lived here. I had a job right out of college at an ad agency as an entry-level graphic designer. Um, went there. From there, I went to Aaron's company in Brilliant and worked with uh, in the marketing on snowblowers and lawnmowers. And now I work um, up in Sturgeon Bay in steel um doing sales and marketing um as a as a, like my full-time job and do you have the, to drive all the way there every day no i do okay. uh remote most of the days and go up there two or three days a week how far away is that from here it's about 45 minutes oh okay and i mean like, i'm being on the other side of the state like dude yeah. i never come out here oh yeah have, well, you, I mean, have you been to door county once dude okay. and recently like okay. this was in like june or may or something okay. it was the first time i'd ever been to door county and wow. i decided to send it and we went all the way to uh rock island oh you went like, all way, the way way up good, yeah good. in fact we got me and my girlfriend we got to washington island yeah when we got there the right off the boat they're like yep just drive over to the other boat and you'll catch it it's like, cool drove straight there didn't make it in time and then the people when the ferry came back were like no like we're not taking you it was the last one of the day too bad and I was like, dude, you serious? Like, we just drove five hours, whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. And we had to rent a canoe. Oh, my God. Yeah, after, no. Yeah, for real. With all of our camping gear, like cooler, all that, and my dog. And we canoed to the island. 
That is incredible. It kind of made it cool. That's a cooler story. Yeah, but that was no. That's the only time I've been out here. Because when you you know growing up in Eau Claire, like Minneapolis is only an hour away. That's why true. would you drive if you're going to go to a big city? Why drive four hours almost to Milwaukee when you yeah. can drive one to Minneapolis? That's like, very true. Even for Packers games and stuff. Yeah. Like I've been to one game, but really, like I mean, Lambo has like you want to go to Lambo, but like. I, I would be fine with going to a Packers game at, you know, at Viking Stadium because it's so much closer. U- yeah. U.S. Bank Stadium, right? I actually do like their stadium, Dude, sadly. It's, I don't want to admit I that. I saw X but... Games there. Oh, did you? Yeah, they had X Games there for like, I don't know, three, four years or something. Oh, and that's it was solid. Like, it was cheap. It was like 20 bucks or something. Holy to see, cow. Like, yeah, and it was the Saturday, the main day, where it was like best trick with motocross. Yeah. They had the the uh, big air skateboarding. Well, anyways, I'm getting off topic. Hey, that's I'm okay. I'm getting off topic. Okay, okay. so... Um, but yeah, so you still have a full-time job doing sales and marketing. Is it a lot of like graphic design stuff or like what kind of thing do you do? So that my full-time job, um, it's not really much of the visual, the art side. It's more the analytical, the back end, the sales, the, the marketing side where you're doing the analytics and kind of driving where to focus energy in certain parts. Um, which is good because it kind of lets me use both sides of my brain, um, I, I like to use both the left and the right. I've always been really good in the math side, the business side. Um, so having that kind of variety, I still don't mind. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I would love to just paint all day and do that kind of stuff. But um, to have a full-time job and kind of have that variety and work too is kind of keeping me probably a little sane. Yeah, dude. Plus, how do you afford your fancy chain that you're wearing? How do you afford this sweet property? I mean, dude, <laughs> it's hard to make money as an artist. It's like, tough. It's super difficult. Yeah. And I know you don't have kids, but even so, like, and even just like having a mortgage and stuff, you don't have enough like proof on paper of how much you make yeah. that like you got to be really successful successful and even then a lot of times it takes the fun out of it it does you know like oh, totally if, you, if you have to make a certain amount then you you can't like be as picky and choosy about which jobs you take and no. there's just a lot more stress that comes with it so how did you get the the mural had you done other murals similar size to that fan? that was a big mural yeah this, that one's a big one that was probably the biggest one i'd done yet i'd done murals before then but nothing um, like that nothing like that so yeah. then how did you did you reach out to that homeowner did they post about somewhere no. So, um, this was right after I'd graduated from college and I had built an online portfolio kind of showing all the different work I'd done the last few years. Like on your own website? On my own website. I built okay. a website just showing my portfolio and stuff. Yeah. And the homeowner somehow had stumbled across my website because he was looking for an artist to paint this fence. Cool. Gave me a call randomly one day. We had a conversation and then it just kind of went from there. Sure. Um, so yeah, he, uh, he's a resident from New York. Um, that's just his Packer party house goes there eight to 10 times a year and it sits vacant the rest the year so it's uh it's kind of what most of the houses have kind of turned on to on shadow lane that face lambeau field but um yeah that was definitely the first kind of project that where it kind of started was that the packers fence and then having that kind of i guess credibility helped lead dude so I, I mean i try to tell people all the time like don't don't just do things for free but i hate that i hate that saying that's like if you if you're good at something never do it for free i'm not saying you did it for free yeah. but i don't agree with that i think you just have to be careful and like you have to have a plan you have to right? have a plan and a strategy like there, yeah. there are so yeah strategy there's so many times where i've done interviews like you didn't pay me to come here today you yeah. know what i mean like i've done a lot of interviews for free yeah and there's always a strategy to why besides the fact that's an awesome story but yeah. like there's a connection to this to that to whatever and like same way with art jobs like yeah. i took one a little a little bit ago where i was painting all these band logos on this window I would never normally do that. For one, I hate putting as much time as I do into painting because I'm like super slow because I'm sure. really like clean lines. I just, I can't walk away from something. Knew it was going to take way too much time and it was going to be taken down like three weeks later. So yeah. normally I would say no, but I had never done anything like that. So I was like, I'll say yes this time because now I have this in my portfolio and yeah. I can show it to get other types of jobs. And sometimes when an opportunity comes up like that, yeah. you gotta, you, you have to do it. You have to seek those opportunities out and then paid other things come once yes. you have those things established but too many people whine and complain about not getting paid for work and they just don't why are you worth it yet you got to yeah. prove that to people. you got it definitely especially in the art industry because everyone kind of thinks that they could be an artist like yeah. they think that it's just picking up a paintbrush or something and going um but to really refine that craft and also build that brand i mean it takes years it takes a lot of time a lot of investment so i mean it's it's huge just to to use that and then to also just connect with other people. I mean, the art industry it's all about connections. Do jobs specific? Jobs specific. You know, like are, I've had yeah. people kind of, I don't know, not maybe give me a 
bad attitude about it. But I, I know that there's people in my town that have been like, why'd Chris get hired for that? You know yeah. what I mean? Like I should have been, there's so many artists that are way more, dude, my girlfriend actually, crazy story, right? We started dating in like April. Um, the only reason she knew who I was was because I took one of her jobs. Oh, really? Yeah, she's an artist. So she, we do this thing called color block in Eau Claire. Okay. Where it's like for for new muralists, I mainly, right? And so they did color block. I had done it before. I kind of opted out. I didn't, I didn't put an application for it. Sure. I ended up painting it one of the walls anyways. But it was her first and only mural so far. Mm-hmm. And there's like 50 artists or something, and they were going to pick three winners. And of those three winners... Those winners were going to talk to this bank in town, and the bank, Prevail Bank, was going to hire one of those winners to paint a full-scale mural on the side of their building. Okay. Okay? She was one of the winners. Oh, my God. Yeah. They all had to submit designs, and then the bank just didn't choose a winner. No. Yeah. Ever? It just didn't... Never happened? Didn't... Yeah. I, I mean, I think somebody made a design, and they didn't like any of the designs, and it just fell through. Like, they just didn't hire one of those three people. Wow. And then I got a phone call. And they hired you? Yeah. That's awkward. So I swiped her job. I didn't know who she was. <laughs> okay. I had no idea. Yeah. She told me this like after the fact. Like okay. after we had met, she was like, yeah, that's how I knew who you were. And, and the fact like, that <laughs> you did that to her and she still wanted to yeah, date dude. you is amazing. For real. But like she <laughs> has an art degree. Like she's okay, an incredibly yeah. talented artist. It was just a matter of like, I owned a business downtown for a very long mm-hmm. time. I'm good at marketing myself. I yeah. got a social media following in the area anyways. So there's like some proof there. I had done other murals so I could show like, hey, I've done other large scale murals. Yeah. I already knew the people from Visit Eau Claire who were like kind of setting it up. It's mm-hmm. like that you have to set up all of that. And unfortunately, most artists are not good on that side of things. Yes. But you have to be if you want things to kind of take off for you. So how yeah. do they go from that fence? Because you repaint that every year, but other things start to pop off, right? Yes, that that's an every year project. Um, but yeah, that just started getting my name out into the public, um, which especially like in murals in, in the Green Bay area, murals haven't really been a thing until probably the last, I'd say five to seven years, Dude, maybe. It's still like farm country kind of it area. Is. You know yes. what I mean? It's not like a super liberal artsy city. No. And even if you get downtown, like you'll see murals here and there. I mean, it used to be nothing. It used to just be like those old vintage whitewash signs on yeah. the side of a brick. But now it's actually, there's art starting to go. So, I mean, that was kind of the same time period as when I was doing the, the Packers fence and starting it. So then I just started doing pop-up murals all over. I mean, I had one down in Indiana. I've had some in Milwaukee. I've had some, um, a lot of in Fond du Lac, Green Bay, Appleton Oshkosh. Um, so that just started one thing led to another and then one connection talked to one person and it's it's that and then just continuing to put out content on social media um not just to stay relevant but just to kind of like show what you're working on what you can do get people inspired and then that can always just start a conversation that could lead to a job i mean it's just continually putting out what you love to do as long as you love doing it is like is is gold and will lead to gold yeah dude and i think like i i think social media carries too much weight yeah you know but if you're just not playing the game you're just kind of losing you know like i got hired i know i've been hired because of my instagram on occasions like i know it It hasn't necessarily like been directly said but i know that's the case like one of them and this one was because my socials right i do like some advertising on my instagram mm-hmm. like i work with quick trip and drink weird just sent me a bunch of stuff shout out to them nick lay law like work yeah. with brands and like I, I you know run advertisements and stuff and i put on my story like hey looking to run some ads for whoever and the salon reached out to me and they're like hey we're opening up a new salon like it was their first only spot yeah. we're opening up the salon we kind of want to get the word out you know maybe do some kind of marketing or whatever and then i said well do you want like a mural and they're like, well, we hadn't thought about it. And I said, well, I could just like post to promote your salon, but I shaved my head. It wouldn't make sense. Yeah. It's like, however, like I could paint your logo in your building or whatever, and then like use that to promote it. Yeah. You know, so I got hired to paint a mural, but just because of the advertising aspect. And yeah. then they loved the mural and it like turned out cool, but yeah. that realistically was the reason they hired me for it. And I know that's not the only time because then they they know when they hire you, you're going to be posting about it yes. and they're going to get all of that social media advertising that yeah. kind of goes along with it. So the people that aren't using it, you just like, you're, you're, 
It's a game that sucks to play, but you have to. You have to play it, and sometimes you're kind of playing it in the dark, too, because you don't know... You don't necessarily know like what you're doing. No one knows what they're doing. It's always changing. You don't know who's going to see something. Yes. Yes. But you just have to continuously put that stuff out. Let's go back to um, where you got into art, like what early inspirations are. Because I I know that you were really into graffiti and stuff. Yeah. And that's where it started with me. Like I I would make like multiple colored stencils of like Dexter. Yeah. You know Dexter's Lab or like Powerpuff Girls and stuff. And like I would spray paint those. Still the only thing I've ever been arrested for. Um, (laughs) But I started like that because in my mind. I never thought I was an artist. I didn't yeah. start painting till I was 28. But in my mind, like, well, I'm just like tracing, so I could just do that. And I still wasn't an artist in my mind. But that's kind of like where everything started with me, yes. which yes. leads into why I still love doing street art. I don't spray graffiti or do lettering, but I still love street art for just, that yeah. reason. So what was where did your love for street com- street art come from and what artist did, inspired you? Yeah, so um, my love for street art, I think, maybe first came from exit through the gift shop dude such a good documentary like that might have at least like i loved art before that but i think that really got me inspired i was curious yeah like that that's one of like my all-time favorites and i still watch it and that's why you know who space invader is oh yeah because i (laughs) i heard of the interview that you did um charlie baron or one of the two interviews yeah sent me two you mentioned Space Invader, and I yeah. immediately was like, "He see I get it through the gift shop yep. on Netflix as well." Yep. <laughs> <laughs> cool. The cool. Space Invader, the Shepherd Fairy, yeah. uh, and the Andre, I think, are the three that they talk about. In, yeah. And Did you the ones, yeah. um? Did you see the Shepherd Fairy documentary that came out? No. Yeah. What platform? Hulu. Okay. Like a year ago. It's no. incredible, dude. You need to. I didn't know that was out there. He's one mm-hmm. of my all-time favorites. I got to meet him once. Did you? Um, I was in L.A. for work, and wow. he was painting a mural randomly on a street. Crazy. Um, so that's the one time, but, um, yeah, he's one of my all time favorites. Yeah. His style of art. Is well, he just, was a pioneer. He was, you he know, started what he a was whole doing. new style. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. My buddy, Isaac Palaio, who I interviewed quite a while ago, um, is friends with him. They've oh, like wow. had exhibits and stuff, which, cause Isaac's big out in the LA, like art scene. Sure. I interviewed Isaac too, way before I should have been able to get a hold of him, but <laughs> hey, that awesome. dude, that dude rules. He, he did the iconic Kobe one that everyone sees. Oh yeah. yeah that I was, have. that was Isaac yeah. who did that one. Cause that went up right after his death recently mm-hmm. or relatively yeah. recently. Yeah. So anyway, so those artists inspired you but your art doesn't look anything like those artists no so i think that just inspired me to to paint outdoors to paint large yeah um, just like the scale mm. and from there so like my first i guess large project wasn't really a project it was my mom leaving on vacation for a week my dad giving me permission to paint the garage sick so like the it, outside the outside of the garage mm. you can do whatever you want to it just can't be um there's no profanity or nothing graphic which okay sure right yeah, yeah so it's a four-sided garage um white wood two-story and in one week i filled the whole thing up um my How'd mom for the paint <laughs> um uh that was basically every paint. penny i had saved up from summer jobs until then was spent on spray paint because that was probably yeah at that time 60 cans maybe yeah well for yeah. real and that stuff i said 50 60 cans at that time yeah that adds up what were you were you doing like bubble lettering and stuff just trying to learn or did you have like a plan for what you no were? i was doing bubble lettering random lettering i was looking at different references a uh, different artists online i was yeah. kind of trying to replicate their styles to see how they did it so it's just like a bunch of this it was basically my sketchbook but with a spray can um mom hated it dad loved it mom hated it because my parents own a bed and breakfast and the garage is basically in the center of the bed and breakfast so which is victorian oh. so if, 1800s victorian style bed and breakfast with european graffiti styled it just she didn't like the vibe right yeah it's clear a high schooler did that yes which is the random part because my dad's the engineer and she's the artist sure because she was she did tapestry and jewelry like that was she did that for years and then she transitioned into owning a business um so she she also really inspired me in art just because she has like the creative side yeah um and then I think probably my dad inspired me more on the business side because he's more, he was in the engineering background and analytical and business knowledge. Um, together they have two businesses. So, yeah, dude, um, I mean, I like without you, kids look at what their parents do. Yeah. You know, I say it all the time that like they don't really listen to you, but they watch what you do because yeah. my kids are eight and 11. Sure. And you emulate them, you yeah. know, and a big thing with art, and one of the reasons I didn't do it until way later in life. 28 way later in life but you know what i mean then a lot of people yeah is because i didn't see it as attainable or something i could do yeah i just like 
thought I wasn't an artist because I didn't do art growing up. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? But when you're younger, if you have a parent, somebody that you literally relate to, but yes. like someone who's in your immediate reach that's doing it, it, it's like, oh, that's possible then. Yes. You can see, yeah, you can see the the end at the light yeah. at the end of the tunnel is possible for sure. So you're 32. So 2014, you would have been 22. So it really wasn't like crazy long after high school that you got hired to do that fence. How many no. jobs and like how did art develop from that garage? You were what, 16? or something at the time? I was about six, yeah, 16, 17. Um, I just got my license. Yeah, so probably yeah. about 16. Okay, so yeah. from 16 to 22, obviously there's a lot. You go to college and all that. But yeah. on the art side, did you, did the mural work just like take a back seat till you were done with college or were you kind of doing projects for friends and stuff? In the I wasn't doing any murals then through college. I was doing large scale paintings. Um, I guess I painted kind of some walls. I wouldn't consider them murals though. I'd just say like I painted some artwork okay. on interior walls, basically yeah. for art gallery stuff. Um, but no, I think from that garage, my next mural might have been the Packers fence. Oh, I have wow. to look back, but yeah. I can't think of any other like large scale project in between sure. the two. Because then from there, it just started going for everything else. Well, part of it, dude, is, I mean, again, why social media matters so much. People don't know who to even ask. No. Like there's not, it's not like they can just Google muralists Green Bay and yeah. then they have a rating system on Yelp with like all 30 yeah. people that are capable. And then leave a review. And, yeah. Right. That's what I mean. It's And that's why you have to be so vocal about it and put yes. yourself out there and have all these things because you, you need to be reachable. You need to be top of mind. When somebody's looking, you need to be the easiest solution. Yep. Because they found you. Yep. You know what I mean? And a lot of times people just, they have, they have no idea where to even look for I that know. stuff. Yeah. Which is tough. It's yeah, especially Midwest, especially art. Um, you're in a bigger city. You're definitely gonna have an easier time finding an artist for anything like that. But yeah, yeah finding one in this area too is difficult because I think Green Bay. Maybe we have five mural artists ish, four or five. Sure. Um, at least it have more than one in the area. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's it's from taking that garage, which is large scale, and then going to the Packers fence, which is seventy feet by six feet. Um, Probably in square footage, maybe roughly the and same. And going to be seen by way more people. Way more people, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Were you nervous doing that? Like, because it's oh, not terrified. like at that time you yeah. knew it was going to be on every NFL game that they were going to show it like they do, you know, but you didn't know that necessarily no. at the time. But still, it was like something you knew everyone going to games was going to see. Oh, yeah. I think I was, the biggest thing I was scared about is the owner wanted it painted in one day. That was his Whoa. biggest goal. And, um, Why? it's huge. He Why? wanted it to be all day event the day before the home opener, just like adding one more oh. big attraction to the area. Okay. Sure. Um, so that was my scariest thing is to do that, like to paint that size. Um, the people seeing it and everything else I'd never really even thought of. I was more like, can I get this all done? I couldn't. Before midnight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I got done at 10 a.m. No, 10 p.m. Um, started at probably about 6 a.m. Wow. It was dark still, 5, 6 a.m. Did you do all of it with spray paint or the majority? Um, the first one was a mix. Sure. Mix of spray and brush. Man, I guess I paint really slow. I don't use spray paint all that much. Like, if you look at my artwork, it's, like, childish, but it's also, like, really crisp line work and stuff, yeah. which is just, like, takes forever to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. So after you got that job... Why? I mean, because of having consistent income from your job is the reason that you didn't just immediately like, oh, yeah. I'm just going to go paint a bunch of murals. But how have you been able to balance it and what kept you motivated to want to do more murals? As fun as they are, it's like really taxing, Very like not taxing. just the physical aspect, which it is really hard on you physically, it takes all of your you know free time. It's expensive yeah. like to invest in the things and to reach out like it takes more work trying to get set up with the job than it does to do the job. Yeah. So it's like you're putting in a ton of time and energy into something that you don't have to do. No. And I think um, one part of that is a lot of people don't understand as an artist, you're not just an artist. You're half sales and half an artist. And I think once I maybe kind of realized that side, I realized that I can kind of promote this brand, the brand being myself. Um, and then kind of just using resources that i have mostly starting on social media i mean i didn't really have much of a following to start um but and then yes trying to get picked up by any kind of publication if you can and any way you can just get your name in front of other people um it just it it, it helps and especially if you have a unique name like zane 
Um, and it's not just like a, a generic name. Like that's, I like think, Chris helped Johnson? me. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> hey, you if you do the whole long name, yeah, that's what definitely would work. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, like, that's why I've now been able just to brand my murals as just Zane because in this area, there's there's no other Zane. You know who, at least, or you could look it up, right. who, who that Zane is. Yeah. Well, and after being on the Passion Pod, yeah. Gonna oh, well, now is. it's the world. Let's switch focus just for a couple of questions here. What's your favorite, all time favorite Packers moment? All time favorite Packers moment. Um, so that would have to be when I was in high school. Um, we had won a, it was, we had to score a touchdown to win a last second game to make the playoffs. Um, gosh, Poole was the receiver. I believe it was P O O L E. I had to be probably really? 10 years old. I got to look that up. But he caught the touchdowns at the game with my dad. We were probably 10 rows up, and he had caught the touchdown. Um, and it just it always won't be remembered from that. Yeah, well, I mean, being a young kid, have you been yeah. to a lot of games then? I've been to a few, yeah. My in-laws have season tickets, so um, my oh, wife sure. and I get the leftovers wow, sure. um, when we want to. My wife's definitely a fair weather fan, so yeah. if it's nice out, she'll go. When it gets cold, she's sure. done. Um, Dude, I'm surprised you didn't pick uh, having uh, Jaden Reed wearing your cleats. And scoring touchdowns. Oh, I mean, I, I could have picked that too. Yeah, I mean, I guess for a more of a recent one, yeah. But I think looking back, because I've I've followed the Packers basically all my life. When I was born, right. my dad put me on the list to be a season ticket holder. Hmm. Um, as of so last you still year, have like ten more years ago. <laughs> um, I by the average, I'll get it when I'm sixty-five. Because <laughs> I'm still thirty two thousand in line. Oh my god! And I think I started at eighty some thousand. Yeah, sure. Um, and there's only a probably a couple hundred, maybe a thousand every year if you're lucky that probably get rid of their tickets and new ones get available. So yeah, yeah. But um, it is fun to see my cleats and Jaden Reed running on the sideline in them, um, or doing the gritty in the end zone. Yeah. Um, well, so you the first one you did. So I, I, I guess I'll summarize. You um, got in contact with Kenny Clark because yes. he wanted to get an actual painting like yes. of himself to show off his UCLA career. And like it was a painting of him for his house. Correct. So you did that. Yes. Then he asked you about painting cleats. Yes. And you had never at that point painted cleats, no, correct? I had not. And so you said, well, I mean, I'm not going to say no. Like, no. Well, figure it out. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so you figured it out. You painted those cleats. And then he referred you to another player. Yes. Referred you to another player. And now you've done them for like a dozen? About a dozen players. Um, and yeah, just getting into that locker room and then just trying to get the name around. Um, with each pair of cleats I make, I do a custom shoe bag that has just the player's name, player's logo, um, and then my name on the other side, just the Zane big. So I'm trying to get as many of those bags in the locker room just to kind of rep, like just kind of like to get that, um, just that marketing out there. But it's, yeah, it's to get the players. It's just referrals. I mean, one I had Sean Clifford. Um, I did him for uh, my cause, my cleats. Um, and the way that I got Jaden Reed is that Jaden on Saturday night before the game was like, I want to be part of my cause, my cleats. Sean calls me, says, Hey, Jaden wants cleats. Can you get them done by tomorrow? Whoa. I'm like, sure. I guess I'm pulling an all nighter. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean the, the players, yeah, they, they all have the, the connections. And when one wants one's like, Oh, I know a guy and they'll, they'll give you your name. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so now it's probably 11 or 12 players. Yeah. Um, but you still don't get to go back into the locker room with them. And I've never been in the chat. locker room. No, I always meet them in the parking lot, which is still awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I mean, I get it, yeah. but it's, it's funny, like how elusive like people like that are. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Cause like I interview a lot of musicians and stuff and like, they're not the easiest to get a hold of necessarily either, but way more so than like Packers players are. They like really keep to themselves. It's like they they're do. their own crew of people. And unless you know somebody, there's no, you know, getting in contact with those. Oh teams. yeah. Well, even like out outside of the stadium stuff, like you never really see the players. They keep to themselves. They keep, dude. yeah. They're just kind of living there, which I don't blame them, especially, yeah. I mean, during the season and stuff, like people would definitely bug them and stuff. Yeah. Um, not negatively, but they definitely just get like a lot dude, of people. I interviewed Dominic Daphne a long time yeah. ago and I just like. I was sitting in my hot tub and I like DM'd a dozen or so players. I was like, yeah. I might be big enough. Maybe someone will respond. And he did. And I was stoked and like signed this jersey for me. I, I drove out here, got the stadium to print this jersey for me because I didn't have any stock. Yeah. Then went to his apartment, which that felt crazy because he had told me that that the apartment building's all players. The whole, <laughs> whole like the whole building, that's who they rent to. And that's like kind of it. So that's I was awesome. in there knowing like, 
AJ Dillon somewhere around here too. Like yeah, knowing they're all right there. Yeah, yeah. I was like, all You're the dudes who don't away, own a house yeah. are are in this building right now. It felt like crazy exclusive. It was oh, yeah. pretty cool, man. <laughs> but it is like because I've been to a bunch of the players' houses, dropping off cleats and stuff. But when you think of like these players making millions and millions of dollars, like you think they're living this like lavish mansion lifestyle, and like a lot of the Packer players, at least, like they're humble guys living in modest homes. Um, yeah, they like their cars. That's the one thing. Obviously, they yeah. they like to spend some money on but i mean they're not like these big flashy guys you see like throwing money around in town like they definitely just keep to themselves and kind of just have their own little click and it's 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 kind of cool because it's 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 a unique area it's a unique team it's a small town it's um yeah it's just it's fun it's it's unique yeah dude well and now the next thing is you need to go do stuff in the stadium that's on my list yes. so how are you going to make that happen i don't know i'm working on it slowly but i want to either be on the stadium in the stadium or something on the grass oh sure. Um, ideally i want to paint a mural on the grass something not the whole grass but maybe like the end zones and turn you in. painted in the grass before? i have not but i have okay. it's, it's a goal it's a want it's a bucket list it would be a i wouldn't even know where to start with that i would just have to um i um I guess I don't know either. I'd have so, to start spraying at that angle. And I've seen people use drones to map out their, uh, sure. Yeah. Painting on, like on the ground, it's way harder. Oh yeah. Like I painted a mural in my town that's on the, uh, bank, like, uh, underpass. Okay. You know, it's like not 45 degree angle, but whatever angle it was. Um, and so it was way too big to use a projector. It's yep. like 32 feet tall and 78 feet wide. It's oh, like yeah. huge, yeah. right? Um, but when I, I, I had like gridded out a system. Yeah painted it and the main like character of it is this huge crab and i realized when i stood at the bottom it's like dude his eyes look way too little and so i had to purposely warp it for the perspective right because nobody is seeing it straight on it would yeah. be impossible to yeah. see it straight on so i had to paint it on purpose like skewed like that which was so hard to do oh yeah i've painted yeah on that direction down once and it was for a mural in fond du lac at a, at a park they're they built this uh, concrete slab. They put a bunch of outdoor musical instruments for kids to play on. Sure. So it was like a, a music illustration. But luckily, they, when they poured the concrete, they had like grids basically for like the, the, the pour lines every three feet. Yeah. So I had a natural grid in place. Right. So it was, that was easier to do. But if I had not done, if I don't have like a grid, um, yeah, painting that direction is is not easy yeah and then well, you have the perspective issue right too. exactly well and it just with yourself it's hard yeah. to tell depth and everything because oh yeah it's like anyways so you got hired to do um kenny clark's shoes and you didn't know how to do the shoes what did you do to figure out how to do the shoes because it is a process like i know that i need to learn how to strip the shoes better i do use like a acetone yeah. and like a uh and sand it down a bit but then i end up having issues of sanding over like the stitching and you know yeah. what i mean so how did you learn to do it and did you do it correctly on his first pair or did you no. have problems where it was chipping away and then you had to redo it oh yeah it definitely um I mean, the first pair, visually, they, I was happy how they looked, but the quality from holding up the paint, yeah, was probably crap then. What kind it, of paint did you use? Um, I, I still used Angelus, but oh. I, I don't, didn't prep it well. I think I might have just wiped a little bit of acetone, um, probably did some light sanding, because um, how I learned was just watching a few YouTube videos, um, but I was also under a time crunch, because I think he wanted them less than a week, too. Sure. So it was, what can I learn? What can I do this? Um but yeah, it's the prep is the most important part, and it also is the most boring part too because it is it's sandpaper and acetone, and I usually do two or three times of that. So I'll do acetone, sandpaper, and keep going back and forth because on especially on Jordans, the the factory coat they put on there is almost like flex seal. It's just like this thick rubbery material, um, and then when I'm done with that. I make sure that the the shoe is completely clean. There's nothing left on it, and I spray it's um, bulldog, bullfrog, bulldog, bulldog. It's an adhesion promoter, so it's it's what people it's it's an automotive adhesion promoter they use for like painting rims to help the paint adhere and not chip off. Do you just tape off then the bottom of the shoe? And... No, I just spray it on everything. Oh, um, and then the areas that I'm painting, I just paint on those areas. It doesn't do any damage to anything else. There's no stickiness to it. Anything. Oh, it's just a really, really stinky spray that I have no idea how it works. But 
ever since I've used that, it's very hard for paint to chip off. Like it still will over time, of course. Yeah. Um, like where it creases and where whatever. it creases, especially or the toes uh, for every player, the toes are the first to go. Sure. Uh, especially defensive line. So then you use the Angelus paint and yes. then do you spray another top coat or anything? Yeah. Yes. So I do a top coat. Um, I used to use the Angelus top coat. I've now, um, switched to liquid kicks, liquid kicks. That's the Thank move. you. Liquid yep. kicks, Matt. I am obsessed. Yeah. Dude. So I called the number that was on that website one yeah. time. Okay. Have you tried that? I have not. It's changed now. Okay. I called and the dude who answered was like caught off guard. Like, why are you calling me? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like asking about the thing and he's like explaining it. And I'm like, I want to say nearly 10 minutes into talking to this dude. And he goes, hey, how did you get this number? And I said, well, it's on the website. It's like the customer service number. And he goes, it's not supposed to be. And I said, oh, and now I'm like blanking on his name. He was the owner of the company. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, they have it's like cell phone or direct that phone That was a cell line? phone number. <laughs> yeah. That's a pretty big mess up. That, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, I guess I must have been the only one who had called. Wow. But it's yeah. a great So product. I ended up talking yeah. to him for like 45 minutes. Super nice dude. And he's like, yeah, reach out anytime. Blah, 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 blah. Like we had connections through skateboarding. He used to skate or something. I don't know. But yeah, that's how I know about that brand. And then they sent me a bunch. So I have like a, all the different types of coats and stuff. Oh yeah. Them. No, yeah. there's my favorite. Um, and I, especially recently I started spraying it on i don't brush it on anymore and just it works so good sure um but so after shoes what other kind of cool things have you po like i know you painted like a little car for a kid I recently little... have you done a lot of things outside of shoes and murals or is it oh, yeah. pretty much just been those two? i've done a lot of just random stuff so yeah i did that little tykes cozy coop packer style um i painted a guitar signed by journey oh. um that was for um make a wish that they auctioned off and then the, the proceeds went towards their foundation have you done a lot of design stuff like digital I, that, design yeah. stuff for digital printing? yeah digital i think is definitely where i started um no that's not where it's, okay i started with painting i went to digital in college i think that's really i got like the really foundation of art the principles like the mechanics behind art not just the visual but like color theory and form and shapes and sketching and all that digital art is kind of its own thing i don't yeah, love I, the way that it feels like i like having something tactile you know what okay, i mean yes. but i'm also rel like well aware that you're not going to make a real living without like well, one, doing like huge things such as like murals, but it's really hard to make a living selling small item paint, like smaller paintings. You almost yeah. have to do prints, stickers, yes. t-shirts, like that type of thing. You kind of have to incorporate. I found that too. Yeah. Selling small paintings. Um, I mean, yes, you can sell them if they're priced right, but priced right is, is not going to be beneficial for your time. Um, cause people aren't looking to spend that kind of much usually yeah, yeah. for a smaller 18 by 24 kind of painting. Right. Um, but yeah, the bigger ones, especially, um, yeah, those those are, are are great to paint. Um, so like on your website, yeah. right? Do you sell products and stuff? Like do you I do. do digital and then you sell T-shirts and prints or, or yeah. any of that type of yeah, stuff? Yeah, so I, I'll sell like my original illustrations. Um, I'll sell. Um, I used to have a Green Bay football apparel line until it was. What does that mean? It was a um, f uh, only apparel that was Green Bay football. It wasn't okay. Packers. It wasn't anything else. It was just a Green Bay football was the name of the line that I did a bunch oh. of different stuff. Um, like, I think this was part of the line of okay. the Green Bay football line. So I had probably 30, 40 products until the Packers finally shut that down because it was, <laughs> which I understand. I, yeah, was, yeah, I, yeah. Was, I was, I was getting very close. I knew, I knew where the line was for breaking it for the trademark. And I was, I was so close to that line, but, um, now I just do a bunch of original illustrations and don't dabble with the whole Packer. And that's why parts. they haven't hired you to paint the stadium yet. I think I might've burnt a bridge there. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta know. What was it like being on Charlie's podcast? So Charlie Barron's is like the Wisconsin guy, right? Yeah. He's a comedian, hilarious. hilarious I'm a fan. Guy. Like I think everyone in Wisconsin is a fan of his. He has a podcast yeah. called The Cripes Cast. He's yeah. been doing it for quite a while. Um, obviously, he does a lot of things, so that's definitely not like his only thing. But we've had a bunch of the same guests now because yeah. we're in kind of the same space. I've, I've been to his recording studio in Milwaukee, but like dude having charlie hit you up and go i want to interview you must have felt pretty cool yeah that that was pretty special and him just as a guy too like he's so down to earth so yeah. cool so natural there's definitely no ego there but he's so funny i mean yeah. even when he's not trying to you just never know like what he's gonna say or where the conversation's gonna go and um 
he too just kind of like you just made it a very relaxed environment and just a casual conversation and um, not making any kind of like pressure behind it. And it's also, I like it when it's not live too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It makes it a lot easier. Just for in sure. case. Yeah, yeah. Just to never know. But um, yeah. So the, yeah, this yours is my third podcast. Um, uh, and it's, it's fun doing these. I really, I enjoy kind of talking about the, the public art that, both I'm doing and that's just also happening in the area. There's a lot going on now in Northeastern Wisconsin. Well, dude, before podcasts, there was not really a platform for artists to ever like speak at length. No. You know what I mean? Like you'd see people's work, but like, unless you went to like an art show where they gave a little spiel, you're not yeah. going to see anything like news no. articles, you know, if there's anything written are always super brief. Yeah. So you never really get a feeling for like who this person is. No. So that's kind of like the perfect, like beautiful thing about podcasts. It is. Yeah. Who the person is and yeah, how they came about to where they are now, which I, we kind of went about like me before. Um, yeah. You're, you're able to express it. I guess not just your art, but yeah, your personality to a wider audience. And it's nice to hear an artist's voice and not just yeah. kind of read what they're saying, but just like you get a better sense of like a person personally, yeah, I it's think. Yeah, whole personal yeah, brand. Right? Yeah, just kind of hearing who they are, how they talk and everything about them. Yeah. Yeah. So you have built yourself as the Packers dude and you keep being hired for all of these. It's been a new mural every year outside the stadium. And I saw you, because we started following each other a little while ago. Um, I saw you promoting that you were going to be doing the fence again this year. And it was a paint by numbers thing. Yeah. And in one day, you had a bunch of people that you didn't know paint your mural. To me, that sounds like an anxiety attack. Yeah, you got to look past the anxiety side of it for sure. It was, it was the second year that I did this is I started a new fence down the street from where the Packers fence was. Um, and it's strictly, it's a paint by numbers community fence where last year uh, about 200 people came out and finished it in under two hours. But it was a lot simpler design because it was my first year doing it. I didn't know what the turnout was going to be. I had some PR before, some news outlets kind of promoting people to come out there. Um, but now this year, it took about 10 hours to complete and it was about 500 people that showed up. Wow. Um, which was great for the turnout, but sucked for the setup. Yeah. That's, that's, it's basically I'm creating a coloring book on a 70 foot by six foot fence. Yeah. Um, black lines with numbers on, on How many white. colors were in it? There's 16 colors. Okay. Um, which that took me to a long time to narrow down what those are because I didn't want to have a slew of 30 colors. I no, wanted it would to have just get too confusing. Way too confusing. Yeah, so I, I wanted to be under 20. Ideally, I wanted to be at 10. I got it halfway in between, so that's, that's what were the me. stipulations for the people to be able to paint? Did they have to paint for a minimum 30 minutes so you weren't running around or like? There was no stipulations. There was no sign up. There was no supplies required. It was kind of a free for all, but it never turned into like that kind of chaos. Sure. Um, people are just respectful. People are respectful. I had a few helpers there with me for people that had questions where people are coming up and kind of asking like where to get started. Um, but yeah, there's no like you have to be here for this long or you have to paint this section. Some people stay there for five, 10 minutes. Some people stay there for a few hours. I mean, sure. it was, it was a mixture of everything, but the, the most fun I had with that was just getting this wider range of community members together that normally wouldn't be kind of congregating together other than for like a Packer game, but it'd be in a larger situation. I mean, this is people painting a large mural together that now when they're driving by Lambo or at Lambo, they get to say, I painted that. Yeah. Um, there's no longer just a select few artists that are painting artwork on that street. Now there's hundreds yeah. um, because we just added 500 more this year. I mean, it's, it's, it's cool just to add community elements to Green Bay that's especially when it's related to the Packers and a community team. Yeah. I think there's a lot more community elements we could be doing. And I'm trying to do my part, at least in creating something that is unique for kids, grandparents, whoever wants to put some paint on a wall. Whose idea was it to make, could you do the bolt? Do you do two fences now then or no? No. So I just do that one. Oh, okay. So I did the, the original Packers fence yeah. eight years, left that and started the, uh, the paint by numbers last year. What, whose idea was it to do paint by numbers? Was that yours from the beginning or was there like talks with the tourism department or something? Or? No. So the no talks in the tourism department. Um, I came up kind of with the idea by seeing other artists do similar things in other areas. There's another artist um, out of Algoma. Um, 
I Yonder is their name. It's a it's a husband and wife, uh, great artist. But they did a mural up in Sturgeon Bay where they had painted like the top twenty feet and then the bottom ten feet had a, like a, some sections with paint by numbers for the community to come do, yeah. um, which was cool to see. So like I I saw that and was like you know I I want to create something like this. I want to get as many people as I can there. I want it to be Packer themed right there on the Lambo, and I just you know want to create something special there, and it it. And now it's kind of exploded and I'm going to definitely kind of keep doing this. Um, I had a sponsor last year. I didn't this year. It's a lot less logistics, not having a sponsor, especially. Yeah, but who pays for it? Uh, it was all out of my pocket this year. Whoa. I know. It was self-funded out of my pocket for the community. Um, Dude, you don't have kids, but you take care of other people. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so like I, I like to give back where I can. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I now and then I'll, I'll do a piece that will be auctioned off for charity and I won't charge anything. Um, but yeah, I mean, this was, I guess, my way in giving back. But with, with the, the issue with the sponsor is being so close to Lambo with all the logos and other gates. And also the houses are technically in the residential district where Lambo's and commercials, the logos yeah. and signage, there's just so much of a mess there. So at least for right now, not having a sponsor this year made it cleaner. I'm probably going to look for one in the future just because I don't want to have to self fund this. It's thousands of dollars every year, yeah. but it's, it's also just a really great thing to add to this area. Dude, um, I totally so I, agree. I, I want to keep it up as long as I can. So how do you, like, I'm a control freak, yeah. like, for sure. There's a oh, reason yeah. I work by myself, is I just, I, it's so much easier if I'm just doing all of it. But with my own work, it's still, like, painting, it's still really hard to call something done. Yeah. Because you are you can always see a line that you're like, I could have done that cleaner. I could fix this a little bit. I could do whatever, especially if you're working large scale. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. But when you got 500 people painting it, there's definitely going to be sloppy work. Like, do you go back and fix things or like how much do you, how do you know when it's, how are you okay with walking away and calling it good? Yeah. So luckily the last two years of doing this, I've only had to do like a few minor kind of touch-ups and the touch-ups I do is just if the wrong colors paint in the wrong place, the irregularity of the paint lines, little drips here and there, unless it's like really distracting and really bad. I like leaving those because it shows just the, the organicness of all the people doing it. It's not sense. perfect. It's not one artist making it every single detail, which I love to do when I'm doing my art. Like I love painting straight lines and doing all that, but I'm not going to expect 500 people to do that. I want right. them to do it in their style, express it. And so this kind of project is almost one of the easiest to walk away from because I have a reason and I'm kind of telling myself it's okay because they did it. I helped mm. create this, but I don't have to make it perfect because I want them to enjoy it too. Yeah. Um, when it's my own work, yeah, that's when it's always tough. To like, is it good? Is it 100%? Is it perfect? Like, sure. I have a, um, a large painting in there that's going to be um, going down to Fond du Lac that I think it's done. I don't know. I keep looking at it. Like, does it need this little thing? Does it need that? And you, like, sure. sometimes it's projects you just have to step away a little bit. Yeah. Um, and the other art you're doing now, well, I guess before we get to that, how do you decide how much to take on and how much not you're are you married i'm married okay yes. so how does your wife be okay with the fact that like you could work a lot less dude like yeah. <laughs> and you're choosing oh, to yeah. work a lot that's got to be she's a trooper she is a trooper and i'm trying to work less now because for the for probably like the last i'd say 2014 to 2022 I, I was doing steady freelance work, things here and there, but it definitely wasn't enough to sustain like a comfortable living. Um, but I also wasn't putting in tons and tons of hours a week to do it. Um, where now I've, I started like this year is where I really started picking up my like promotion, my brand and trying to get out there as much as I can. Um, my Instagram alone is 10 X and followers in like eight months, just from oh. really getting out there. Yeah, um, well, like 15 or something. 15, now? 15, yeah. 000? I think I just hit 15 now, which, um, was, Congrats, that's thank dope, you. Dude. That, that really is honestly is, though, like in Wisconsin, that's a lot, that's especially a lot. as an artist. There's an, not it's, very many. No, it's, it's you know? hard to get those people. Yeah. Um, and that sets you apart and is a huge tool. Yes. You know, for everything that you're doing, there's a reason to do it. It's not like a egotistical, I just want to be like big on the internet. Like, no. no, this is an important tool yeah. for like your portfolio. It's part yeah. of it. And you just want to share it with the people, especially yeah. the community stuff. Mm -hmm. That's the best part. Yeah. Um, so how do you decide which jobs to take and which ones not to? So that way you're not making your wife pissed off. Yeah. So, um, now I book out, I, I still want to take as many projects as I can. I just, I have a program now that I'm using to book out my projects and kind of elevate my, or not accurately calculate what to work on when per week. 
Is this so, AI? Um, it's using some AI, yes. Sick. So it the basically, future. yes, basically, <laughs> exactly. No, so I, I'm able to put in all my client information, my product information, how many hours I think that project's going to take, and then I can say what days per week I'm willing to work on projects in general and how many hours, and then it will kind of map out this is what you should work on for these due dates. Um, so now I'm I'm booking out into February and March for a lot of things. Dang, dude. Um, You're from- way more sought after than me. <laughs> <laughs> dude, so it, I think, I mean, as artists, you, you get comfortable in one thing or another. Like, I know you do, like, a, spo- a lot of sports yeah. stuff, you know, but you got to continue to push yourself and, like, learn different mediums. What are some of the current weak points in your own mind? What are some of the weak points in your art, in your artistic ability? Yeah. So I think one thing which I don't have, and I've always wondered if I need is a like detected style. Like you see, it, you know it. Mm-hmm. Like especially with your mural art, I see it. I know it's you. Appreciate a lot that. of my murals you see it and unless you look at the signature you don't automatically know like i have like my color stripes like i have some things that are more like identifiable identifiable to what i do but a lot of the work um is 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 not um i think as identifiable which i i don't know if i want to have that style because i really like to do a variety of of illustrations of styles of of themes um yeah i do a lot of sports um love doing sports but i I love stepping away from sports too um and it's i guess just what am i most passionate about what do i think i can i can accurately do and give my best in in the allotted time that they're looking to have this done um because i want to make them happy too um so i guess it's a mixture of is it attainable and am I going to enjoy every second of it? What was the last project you picked up, other than the paint by numbers one? What was the last project that you picked up that you weren't hundred percent sure going into it you'd be able to do it? Yeah, but you figured it out. It was the concrete musical slab in Fond du Lac, because um, I had never painted um, on directly on the floor How big before. Was it? it was twenty six by twenty six circle. Did you purposely work your way from the middle all the way out or did you let things dry to be able to step on them again? Yeah, I went color by color. It was a seven color mural. Um, So then basically I was kind of playing hot lava and only stepping on the colors that were dry. Yeah. Um, And there's only a few footprints that I had to repaint at the end. Sure. Did you put like a clear coat of any kind on it? Yeah, I had used I put uh, like a quarter inch epoxy on it, like a garage floor epoxy, like thick 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 so people are gonna slip it on it if it's uh oh, it's, if it rains at all <laughs> yeah it's it's um it's got something built into it that it's almost like a sandpaper texture so it's got like sure. the grip thankfully because i was worried about that yeah last thing i want from a liability standpoint is a kid slipping playing music dude instruments. yeah a lot of people don't realize that for public art a lot of times the city requires you to have insurance and all that yeah i've had mural insurance now for six or seven years so where do you get that approximately how much does that cost somebody to get it yeah so i get it from next I think is the is the next.com I think is where I get my insurance. You just like Google it to I find Google it. I Google to find mural insurance because it's kind of a niche. A lot it's of super, definitely it, a niche. like Geico doesn't offer mural insurance. Yeah, yeah, you have sure. to find like a special company to do it. But it's not very expensive. I have a three million dollar policy. Okay. Um that protects basically if someone were to get injured on my job site while I'm working. Mm. Um so that doesn't run me more than I think it's about twelve hundred a year. Oh, okay. Does that cover if you use lifts and everything too? It covers the lifts. Yes. Oh, okay. There are some stipulations in there, but the only thing that I was worried for, worried about in the past, finding for liability, was this paint by numbers. Sure. Um, but um, I talked to a lawyer this year, and since I, the people are all on city property because the city owns that drainage grass part. Okay. That if anything ever were to happen, I wouldn't be liable. Sure. Um, but it is, I think, as a mural artist especially, there are ways people can get injured on a job site. Yeah, you're not working with, like, many power tools, but you drop a pan of can- or a can of paint off a lift and it hits someone, that, that could be kind of bad. Yeah, there's, ge- there's things that can happen. In general, it's hard because a lot of people don't realize how, many, like, how much red tape there is in the way. Oh, like, yeah. there's a reason that there aren't just a ton of murals around. Yes. Because, for one, there's not funding for them most of the time. No. So you're expecting the artist to come up with the idea. But then, even if you want to do something, even if you're going to fund it yourself, there's a lot of red tape to go through, such as having insurance. you got to get things approved through a city. Like, yeah, city permits. I, yeah. yeah, I think there's way too much red tape in the way. And I there think is. they need to address that problem. They do. Um, and I know at least, like, in Green Bay, they're pretty good about putting up murals as long as it's not like an advertisement. So it's not like a yeah. signage for the company. But um, 
yeah, I, I, I want there to be as little red tape as possible because public art is, is free gallery for people. I mean, you're not having to go to the MoMA or some expensive gallery to kind of like look at this, these artworks. I mean, you can just drive around the streets. You can go to the grocery store and you get to enjoy some beautiful art. So it's like art for everybody, it's for dude. Everybody. And not everyone, yeah. like very few people have a dad in a garage yeah. that says, go paint one. I know. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's such a, I had wanted to paint like a, uh, one of my monsters because that's all I paint really. Yeah. Well, I mean, I do jobs for other people, but when if it's my choice, I'm going to paint a monster. Mm-hmm. Um, and my friend Kelsey Wemberg organized a lot of the art stuff in Eau Claire. Uh, Artfly is like the organization she does. She's the one who started the Color Block Project in the first place. I had been chirping in her ear for a while of like, hey, I want to paint a monster really big somewhere. If you ever have an opportunity, you let me know. Yeah. And I like this was for a, a while, probably a couple of years. And then I got a phone call from her one day and she's like, hey, we're doing this thing called Color Block. And it's for people who haven't done murals really yeah. before. And like you could apply. I think it could be cool. Dude, from there it took off. Then I started getting all these opportunities. But it took somebody really like laying it in front of me where I didn't have to get insurance for it. I didn't have to get anything approved really for yep. it. I, it was just like here. But most places don't give those opportunities. And still for me, I was 30. Yeah. I don't know, you know, because I didn't know that it was like really possible. And like, if we had more people within the city organizing and trying to make this something that was attainable, yeah. I think things would change really fast. And they have in other areas in the world, just not in rural, I guess we're not rural Wisconsin, but you know what I mean? Yeah. And like, in wisconsin in farm country uh the arts are not like the top priority usually they're not and some some cities are starting to like i've been doing a lot of work with fond du lac and they're getting like beautification grants to help kind of like elevate the the aesthetics of their city yeah and they're using a lot of those funds to add murals and other kind of public art to that city so i mean i've done with the the two that i'm finishing up right now will be five that i've done in fond du lac in the last two years and there's a few other artists have done there too so like that that city i think right now like they're all about the art and i think a lot of cities that if they like even putting themselves on a map want to be a destination is adding art is um maybe not even a reason to go there but it just kind of adds to the culture the environment the vibe of everything and even just makes the city kind of like cooler than it was it could yeah it's just like social media yes it's because they know that people are going to take a picture in front of this thing on social media oh yeah i've made a few ig background murals i'm telling you dude yeah like that's why you see these wings and stuff all over the place but like the beautification grants that's not something unique to that city these like these grants are out there federally like there are federal grants for cities and, and and they have that for like park systems and other things but these art ones like and the thing is is they're not exclusively art like people can use a beautification grant to like redo a sidewalk and put a nice bench down you know it could be all kinds of stuff but the the dollars are there it's just a matter of an artist having business sense and going okay i want to do this project i'm going to do all of the legwork yep and show why this would make sense to be able to put it here people aren't just like calling zane and saying hey zane i have this perfect opportunity you should do this for me yep you know what i mean like things do happen but a lot of it is even once you are established is reaching out to people and saying hey i would love to fill my calendar like i have time available in this time frame is there something you know because again they don't know where to look to find these people so it's just a matter of like actually reaching out and you can reach out to your tourism department there's one of those with like pretty much every city if you actually look into it there is somebody in charge of arts in your city somebody yes. or a city manager if nothing else that can point you in the right direction you just have to be willing to actually reach out and yeah. do the thing you, it's there is a lot of legwork involved yeah it's not just like everyone sliding into your dms like here's all the free work like just go to town no you have to search it out um i there's many different websites i use too like um our public artist.org is one i use and um call for art entry.com which are both these platforms that post large public mural opportunities out there sure um but yeah it's as an artist especially in a more rural area it's cold calling it's cold emailing it's it's concepting work for a project that's not even on the table just to get someone excited for maybe that project being down the line like it's there's always a lot of legwork um in this industry but the cool part is you're the only one though yeah right if you are in a rural area like that you're not competing with 50 other artists you're probably the only (laughs) artist that's reaching out you know what i mean like more than likely you're the only person who's uh, like providing an opportunity for somebody yes you know what i mean so you just have to be willing to do that yeah so what projects 
are coming up slash you're working on? You're working on two murals right now? Like yes. what all things are going to be coming out? Because this will probably come out two to four weeks, my guess is. But oh. like what should people be looking for? Yeah, so I've got two, um, I guess their murals are large paintings. So they're four foot by eight foot steel um, sheets that are painted. They're going in Hamilton Park and Fond du Lac. Um, one is an interactive painting um, of blowing bubbles. So you like you can look like you're holding the wand of blowing bubbles, and the other one is a find the the find a picture, find the image. So there's 18 hidden images in this kind of like abstract, colorful um, mural that like there will be a guide and kids can just stand there and try to find the different images that are on the list. So those are two things coming out there. I've got um, a mural going up on uh, Merrick's down on University, uh, the, the fish restaurant, um, and just a lot of custom cleats. Right now I'm doing about two pairs, two or three pairs a week. For Packers players? For Packers players. So I did TJ Slayton and Carl Brooks this week. Wow. That's, and, that's, a lo- that's a lot. Are players getting multiple pairs of them? Um, so TJ gave me six pairs to start because oh, wow. okay. he wants a new pair each week. Yeah. Um, so I'm on week four with him right now. Um, Carl wants them when he wants them, just kind of like sporadic. And yeah, sure. kind of same with like Jaden and the rest of the guys is just kind of um, when they want to switch things up. There's there's a pair of cleats I did for Jaden Reed. It's uh, it's lightning bolts. It's yellow in a, in a green cleat that... Um, He's worn, I swear, eight, nine games he's worn these cleats. Oh, wow. And they are so deteriorated that I've, I've asked him, like, please, please just let me repaint them. And they must just be, like, his lucky thing because he just won't do it. He just he wants the cleat the way they are. And they, first of all, got to stink. But second of all, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's... It's on national TV. Yes. Like, you want your artwork to look you do what it too. could look like. Yes. You know? So it, it is... It's great to see that they love the product, they're using the product, but you also want the product to be looking perfect all the time. Yeah. Um, but Which is unrealistic to a certain degree, but like, yeah. come on, Reed, you have enough money to pay for some more cleats. Just <laughs> let them do some new pairs. Like, but but they're, they're lucky cleats. They're lucky cleats. Dude, yeah, I guess so. Um, one more question for yeah. you. I am always looking for new artists just for like inspiration. Of course. One that I'm a big fan of, Michael Sieben. He's the illustrator who does all the artwork for Drink Weird. Sure, sure. Um, he was also, he was the managing editor of Thrasher for 10 years, a little over 10 years. I interviewed him down in Austin. Dude, I'm a huge awesome. fan. Um, who are three artists, other artists, that people can go check out right now that you're a fan of? Three other artists? Don't have to be Packer related. It no. can be anything. Um, Puff Monster. Which is similar, I think, style, almost in the realm of, like, your monsters. But he's got a different look, more of, like, ice cream cones. Oh, um, cool. So I love his I illustrations. Like I know him. I feel like you probably have seen his like, work somewhere. Yeah. Um, Shepherd Fairy, but everyone knows him, so I don't even include that on the list. Yeah. Um, another one that I'm really going to, um, Brent Shru- Schroener, Schreider? Okay. Uh, Marvel illustrator out in Minneapolis. You should interview him. Incredible illustrator. Um He's done a lot of comic book work. I'm butchering his last name. Sure. I'm really sorry, but definitely go check him out. Um, incredible art. He does, he, uh, on his kids' lunch bags, he will do Marvel characters on them. And they're like oh, these wow. beautiful lunch bags that are getting thrown away and it's sad, but um, sure. definitely go check him out. Um, and then another one would be Ma Dudes. So uh, Mitch, he's another Green Bay artist. He makes art out of shoe boxes. Oh, cool. So he deconstructs like sculptures. No, so he will make. Um, it's an illustration. He'll use different color blocks from the different boxes. So and, it'll be like built out layered. Uh, no, it'll be it'll be like just. You know, you got to go look and check it out for yourself. Well, I'll so, put all yes. these artists' Instagrams yes. on the screen. So basically, like he did a. I'll call it a painting or a piece of a large Jordan shoe. And for all the different sections of the shoe were different boxes cut out mm. for that section. And then he had a different box that was used for stitching, like the details on it. But um, it's incredible. Yeah, he he's definitely one to check out. And he's a Green Bay artist. Sure. Um, so definitely go see his work. Dope, dude. So everyone's going to go check those out. But more importantly, they're going to go follow you on Instagram, yes. which is at Zane Stotts, S-T-A-T-Z. Yes, underscore Dope. stats, S T A T Z. Oh, there's an underscore yes, in there. there okay, is an well, you'll see the official package. It's okay. Artist. Yes. Um, and then the website, is it, what is it, just zanestats.com or what is it? There's many URLs that will get you there. The official URL is zasdesigns.com, but if you just want to go zanestats.com, you will get there. Perfect. And you could just Google it. So yes. go follow him on, Insta- on Instagram, send him a message about what your favorite art is, try to hire him. 
you could send him shoes. I'm sure he's available. You might have to get booked out till March. Hey, but, uh, I, but I'll do he's shoes, available. Yeah. Dude, thank you so much for hosting me. This is cool. I mean, we had the sun a little bit in our we face. We did, but, but it's this gorgeous. is like a, a beautiful day in Wisconsin. All these yeah. people that listen to the show anywhere else don't understand how beautiful Wisconsin is. No, we are lucky. Our winters can be miserable, so miserable sometimes, but our falls, I mean. This Dude, is yeah, with football, go Pack, oh, go. Yes, thank right. you again. Thank you for joining us for this episode of The Passion Pod. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. We'll see you soon.